gas turbine engine that powers the turbojet aircraft is also the basic unit of two other types of aircraft engines. The turboprop engine uses this basic unit, but here the turbine drives a propeller. The turboprop engine takes advantage of the desirable features of both the propeller and the gas turbine engine. This helicopter also uses a gas turbine engine to drive its rotor. This is the turbo shaft engine. As you will see, the turboprop and turbo shaft engines are very much alike. The purpose of this film is to introduce you to these two engines. Let's begin by reviewing the operation of the basic gas turbine engine. The engine is divided into three sections, compressor, combustor, and turbine. This can-type combustor section has several combustor chambers. The other common type is the annular combustor. In it, all combustion takes place in one large chamber. Since the combustion process is the same in all combustor cans, we shall show only one. Air enters the engine through an inlet duct and is compressed in the compressor section. It then flows into the combustor section. Fuel is introduced into the combustor and the fuel-air mixture is ignited by a spark plug during the starting cycle. Once started, combustion is continuous and self-sustaining. The rapidly expanding hot gases are directed through the turbine where some of the energy in the gases is given up to rotate the turbine. In a turbojet engine, the turbine utilizes some of the gas energy to drive the compressor and the total jet thrust is provided by reaction to the flow of the jet exhaust gases. Additional turbine stages are used in turboprop and turboshaft engines to extract almost all the energy of the hot gases. The turbine, through a reduction gear, drives the aircraft propeller as well as the compressor. In this type of engine, propeller thrust is large jet thrust comparatively small. This turbo shaft engine, as well as some turbo prop engines, has two separate turbines. The first, a gas generator turbine, is coupled directly to the compressor to provide the energy for compressing the air. The second turbine is called the power turbine. It is a free turbine, that is, it is not linked mechanically to the gas generator turbine, and the speeds of the two are mechanically independent of each other. In a turbo shaft engine, the power turbine drives the helicopter rotor through reduction gearing and the aircraft transmission. In a turbo shaft engine, no use is normally made of the small amount of energy remaining in the exhaust gases. At the manufacturer's plants, we can see the various components of these engines as tests are conducted on them. Here, the T-56 turbo prop engine is manufactured and tested. Prior to machining, turbine wheels and other parts are examined for minute internal flaws by the ultrasonic immersion inspection system. This test uses high frequency sound waves to determine the exact location of any flaws. Even minute flaws can cause failure of a part at the high speeds and high temperatures involved in operation of the engine. In this test, a blade is subjected to vibration by an air blast to ensure that it will be strong enough to stand up under all engine operating conditions. After assembly of the compressor, concentricity of the blade tips is checked. Then it is mounted in this machine where proper balance of the assembly is checked and corrected. On the production line, the turbine combustor and other tested parts are assembled into sections. Here we see the turbine and the combustor sections 
in final assembly with the compressor section. The complete engine is now installed with a propeller in a test cell for final test. The test operator has instruments and controls that perform the same functions as the cockpit controls. The engine controls have been simplified to make the pilot's job less demanding. Preparing to start the engine, the operator sets the condition lever from ground stop to run. This is the position used in the aircraft for all normal starting and in-flight operations. A single power lever is used to control this engine. This lever combines the functions of the throttle, mixture, and propeller controls required for a reciprocating engine. With the engine running, the most important engine instrument is the turbine inlet temperature indicator. This temperature indication is a measure of the energy being made available to the turbine and in addition will give evidence of an over temperature condition. In operation, an increase in power is achieved by advancing the power lever. This increases fuel flow causing the turbine inlet temperature to rise, thereby increasing the energy input to the turbine and its power output. This engine is designed to run at its most efficient speed, regardless of power changes. Let's see how this happens. The power lever is connected to a coordinator in the engine control system. This system also receives inputs of fuel density, air temperature, and air pressure, and corrects for them. The coordinator controls fuel flow through the fuel control and propeller pitch through the propeller regulator. When the power lever is advanced to flight idle position, fuel flow is increased. This causes an increase in turbine inlet temperature and RPM and a corresponding increase in energy available. With further travel of the power lever from the flight idle to the full power position, the RPM does not increase. The engine and propeller operate at a constant speed, but more power is available because of the rise in turbine inlet temperature. In order for the engine and propeller to continue to run at constant speed with increased power, the coordinator increases propeller pitch. The additional torque developed in the engine is thus taken up by increasing propeller pitch rather than propeller speed. When the power lever is retarded, fuel flow and propeller pitch are both decreased. Power to the propeller decreases and engine speed remains constant. Now let's look at this cutaway of the T-58 turbo shaft engine. The components are similar to those in the T-56 turbo prop engine. The manufacturer's tests of the T-58 turbo shaft engine are conducted in a like manner to those on the turbo prop engine. Here a compressor is mounted in a test pit where it will be run at overspeed conditions at a simulated high altitude. Structural integrity and freedom from vibration are checked in this pit. This annular type combustion chamber is being readied for testing under actual engine operating conditions. In the combustor test stand, checks are made to be sure that burning is uniform, providing good temperature distribution without hot spots. Burner efficiency and life characteristics are carefully checked. This turbo shaft engine uses a free power turbine. Here it is tested in the turbine test stand. The main reduction gear is put through rigid endurance and mechanical checks to assure reliable bearing and gear life. Here tests are made to see that no adverse vibration is present. The assembled engine is installed in the engine test cell for a detailed checkout of every phase of performance. The engine control system 
permits minimum pilot attention to the engine, allowing him to concentrate on aircraft control. The pilot is provided with an engine control lever in place of a throttle control. This is not a constant speed engine, and advancing the engine control lever causes an increase in power turbine speed. Gas generator speed varies to match output power requirements as load varies during flight maneuvers at a constant rotor speed. This is achieved by the engine control system, which monitors gas generator speed and adjusts it as necessary. The system also monitors power turbine speed and maintains it as determined by the setting of the engine control lever. Therefore, once the engine control lever is set, it can be left alone during most flight operations. Maintenance of turboprop and turboshaft engines is simpler than maintenance of reciprocating engines. One reason is the ease of accessibility for inspection or minor repairs. The turbine is easily visible through the exhaust pipe. The handling of the engine for major repair or periodic maintenance is also a comparatively simple matter. Like the turboprop engine, all components of the turbo shaft can be inspected by removing cowling. The turbine section of the turbo shaft engine can be seen by removing access panels. The comparatively small size and light weight of this engine makes handling of it a relatively simple matter. This turboprop engine which combines the propeller with the gas turbine makes possible a high-performance aircraft. The cockpit engine controls are fewer, putting less burden on the pilot. The ground check procedure is simple, and no engine warm-up is required. They run smoothly and are practically free from vibration. At lower speeds, the turboprop is more efficient than a jet engine, providing better takeoff and wave-off performance. The turboshaft engine has some of the same advantages. The engine controls are simpler than in reciprocating engine helicopters. The ground check procedure is shorter and no warm-up is necessary. Like the turboprop, the turboshaft engine operates more smoothly and with less vibration and reciprocating helicopter engines. The turboshaft and turboprop engines play important roles in maintaining the Navy's advancing air strength.